eat their food. Hey, what's going on, peoples? Now I'm here. So, look. I wanted to do something new. I kind of was doing this before and I would do it every so often. One of the things that I absolutely love about my Bible. Come on, somebody, anybody out there that love the Bible, make some noise. Make some noise if you love the word of God. Make some, uh, make some noise if you love the word of God. Uh, make some noise if you love the word of God. If you love the word of God. If you love the word of God. Word of God. Like, <laughs> I be having fun, y'all. But if you love the word of God, y'all, make some noise, though. But one of the things that I love about my Bible is um, I love telling Bible stories from time to time. And I like modernizing them and I like making them applicable for my life in the way that I grasp and understand them. And I was reading this book the other day and it really blessed my soul. Um, and so I figured out why not bring out a new segment and just do it from time to time called Ratchet Bible Stories. Where I recap the Bible and we can talk about it in the comments of what I learned, what stood out to me, what I may not have grasped the first time. So... The first Ratchet Bible story that we're going to do today is the prodigal bruh. So, yep, y'all know it as the prodigal son. And basically, it's the story about, you know, the son. Jesus tells a parable. Jesus tells a parable in the book of Luke and just, you know, within his sermon series. And so, in this parable in particular, there was a father with two sons, right? There was an older son. There was a younger son. Boom. You don't have to be, you don't have to be super smart to understand that. But the thing was, the father was wealthy and had bags and he was you know just he had money he had money out there thing you know what i'm saying he had some money out there and so the youngest son asked the father i don't know how that happened out of nowhere you know what i'm saying but he pretty much asked his father like dad like can you give me my inheritance early bro like can you drop me the bag right now like right here right now can i get it Bruh. and you yeah, know the first thing about that him asking his dad for the money that he was gonna get for his inheritance is that's mad disrespectful because his pops is still alive that's equivalent to you asking your parents to give you their insurance policy money when they pass like do you know how disrespectful that is to say that to anybody that you really love and care about but here is this young boy i don't know how old the boy was they don't really tell us but here's this young man asking his pops like yo like give me the insurance money bro and i'll be good to go and i'll get out your hair you know what i'm saying and you know his pops i don't know how his pops read because we don't have a lot of context but you know the story goes the pops was like bet so it said that you know after he asked that he gave he divided his house he divided everything that he owned between his two sons like in real time like so you know i'm sure he split down the middle like all right this is gonna go to john this is gonna go to isaiah like this is what you're gonna get this is what you're gonna get and he just went down the list right Long story short, after he did that and devied up everything, you know, gave him both what he had or what he had currently, you know what I'm saying? Old boy relocates. And it said old boy moved to a far, 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 far country. Like, you know how ridiculous, you know how crazy that is? And I'm putting it in today's concept. You know how high gas is and you moving? You moving? You taking all your stuff and, and, and Lord forbid, you got to fly. And you know how they cancel the flights and stuff? Ain't that crazy? He asked for his father's insurance policy money. And then many, not many days after, let me let me go, let me go to the scripture so y'all know I'm not making this up. It's in Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 12. So, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them, divided to them his livelihood, excuse me. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together journeying to a far country and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living verse 14 but when he had spent all there arose a severe famine in the land and he began to be in want now mind you bro he asked for his dad's insurance policy dad was like all right bet i'm gonna give it to you we don't know what that conversation was i can't even imagine asking my parent like that i can't even imagine if you are an african-american I can't even imagine asking my family for something like that. That's so disrespectful. I don't even know if you would live to, to get through it if you're younger. Well, I mean, it may depend on the person because people are different. But that is a very difficult conversation to have. And you ask it for money. People don't even like to talk about death and their parents and their loved ones passing. And you asking for the money you would get after they pass in advance, bro. Bruh. This is not like, <laughs> this is not a record deal. You can't get the cash in advance. This ain't a loan. Like, what? That's wild. Wild, y'all. Wow. But he asked him anyway. And the story goes, the father gave it to him like we just read. And then the boy moved. He packed it up. 
left town. Went, didn't even go like down the street. Didn't even go downtown. My boy moved to a far country. He went, I call it across the world. My man went from state to state. He went somewhere really far. From east to west, north to south. Like, oh boy, really left and like packed it up and went to a far country. And he was just like throwing it, throwing it, throwing it, throwing it. Like, just, just like, just splurging, splurging, splurging. I mean, my God, today. Splurging so much so after he spent everything, everything, nothing left. After he spent everything, that's how life gets you. That's how God sometimes gets you too, bro. After this man literally spent everything, boom, recession. Boom, now gas prices is really high. Boom, now everybody not opening up their house for you to stay at. Boom, now you can't even fly back home because it's gonna cost an arm and a leg. Boom. Even if you try to fly back home, you know, you're not, you're not making it because your flight may get canceled. You don't even know how you're gonna make it. Like, what? And on top of that, now they ain't got no grocery stores. They was talking about, uh, y'all remember they was talking about a shortage of chicken wings and stuff? I mean, just food desert. You don't even know what you're gonna eat. It's a famine. It's a pandemic. It's a recession. You don't know what you're gonna eat. You don't know where you're gonna stay. Like, what you supposed to do? You done spent your last. I mean, I mean, y'all, it's something about being in desperate situations where that prayer life, listen, that's when that prayer life comes out. You're like, God, I know I ain't do everything perfectly, bro, but I need you to come on, God. Help help a brother out. Like, help help a brother out. You know what I'm saying? Like, make a way. Do something, God. Do something. Do something for your boy. Something for your boy. God, I was wrong, but come on, God. So it says in the same text that old boy found a job. And how do I know? It says because he joined himself. Let me find it. Yep, verse 15. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So, oh boy, when it said joined in the, I'm gonna look it up in the Greek. When I read it in the Greek, it meant to labor for. So basically, like, you know, I'm imagining like, oh boy, going to house to house, door to door. You know, we would probably be like on Indeed. We'd probably be scrolling, asking people, hopping in the DMs, like, bro, like, I'm looking for a job. Like, anything we'll do at this point. I mean, it's, we're desperate. You know, you don't got, you don't have many options when you're desperate. When a man, when a man is hungry, bro, can you imagine doing this on an empty stomach? My God, I have no good to nobody. Famish. I'm like, Rest, you should bring me a wine cooler and a, and a lamb kebab or something like that. Give me, give me a fool. Give, give me something. I'm just like, no energy, no energy. But he was, he joined himself, and so let's find that in the Greek. So, and for y'all, I've really been attached to this blue. Y'all can't see it, but this blue letter Bible app. I'm gonna put it right here. This blue letter Bible app, y'all. I'm telling you, this has become my favorite app on my, on my phone because it has this concordance, and I could literally like tap the verse, hit go to the interlinear under the study section. And it'll bring up all the words mentioned within this uh, verse, and I can see what each mentions. Each is defined in the Greek. I mean, this concordance is so good. Just it, and it's on the go. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I loved it. So, and it, if I go in here, it says, okay, it says kolao, kolao. I'm gonna play the. I'm playing the man pronouncing it so we get it right. Strong's G twenty eight fifty three. Kalao. Kalao. Hey, your boy got it right. Kalao. Kalao, my guy. My guy. My sis. Kalao. So right here, outright, it means to glue together, to cement, to fasten together, to join or fasten firmly together, to join oneself to, to cleave to, to stick, figuratively. And then if I go down to the Thayer's Greek lexicon and I click jump to the scripture index and I find it in the thing. And it says right here, with the dative of the thing to give oneself steadfastly to labor for cleave to. So my man's went, found a job with whomever, and old boy was like, buddy was like, yeah, like you can feed my pigs. Like, I got you. And so my man's was feeding the pigs, hungry as all get out. Hungry as all get out. I mean, starving like bruh man from the fifth floor on Martin, just starving. And so much so that he working and he's eyeing. He's literally eyeing the pig pies bro like can you imagine walking somebody's dogs and you're literally looking at the treats like bro that looks so good right now i'm so hungry i'm so hungry and nobody's giving me nothing and you know even if old boy tried to beg it tells us too it tells us right there y'all it literally says right here in verse 16 and he would gladly have filled his stomach with pies that the swine ate which are the pigs and no one gave him anything that's how you know that boy is starving 
starving like Marvin. <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy. But then boom, that man had a revelation, epiphany. I just had an epiphany. I need to go to Tiffany. He had an epiphany, y'all. Light bulb came on, blink. And so it says, verse 17, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And so, old boy has a, he, you know, his mind goes off, and he's like, bro, I'm just going to apologize to my pops, because my pops is so wealthy. My pops is so stacked and loaded that he literally has people on payroll all the people that work for my pops they have a salary they're not worrying about what they're gonna eat next they're not worrying about where the money gonna come from because they are working and he works you know what i'm saying he's paying these people like my dad is on it that's a man of integrity like i'm out here struggling why bro why am i struggling when my what what i gotta go back home i gotta go back home i can't stay out here i gotta go back home and so literally you know, on, on the way home, it, it gives us kind of insight. Like, my boy did was doing what Patti LaBelle was doing, y'all. Like, he was rehearsing his lines. Like, what am I going to say to my pops? Like, what am I going to say to my pops? Because I was mad disrespectful. I was mad disrespectful to ask for the insurance policy money outright, but he gave it to me. But that still don't make it right, and he's still alive. Like, I didn't even think about that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he's rehearsing his lines. Like, Patti, Patti told us a thousand times. And he's like, you know, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. My man's like, don't even, you know, you could disown me. You could literally disown me, bro. I will be one of your servants. I will be one of your servants gladly. Gladly. I'm, only, I'm not even worthy to be called your son at this point because I've disrespected you, I've shamed you, and all the things. But the scripture says, my dude, my, my sister, it says literally when he was coming up on the property, I imagine like my, I'm imagining like it's a mansion or something since they wealthy and like you know like the uh the porch or like the little lawn area maybe the dad was far it says when he was a great distance off you know what i'm saying i'm thinking like at a mansion you know you got like them long drive uh driveways you and you just walking up the joint you ain't got no car you ain't got no clickety clack you ain't got none of that you know, i just imagine like you're walking up the long driveway like on the color purple when Celie was walking into the church from the uh not Celie, when suge was walking back to the church singing and was reconciled to her father and how long that journey kind of was but they kind of sped it up and everything not even get into how she was singing but anywho but like thinking about that and it said the dad literally arose and ran after my boy hugged my guy gave him a uh a wardrobe told the servants like hey bring out the fatty calf my son is home let's celebrate let's turn up let's get lit because my boy is home and i equate that to being like yo like god god came through he answered my prayers he did not miss a mark i'm gonna celebrate i'm gonna turn up i'm glad i'm rejoicing and just you know he didn't he didn't greet his son with like closed offness with arms crossed and like stank attitude but he ran to my boy because there was a famine in the land because at the end of the day he is still his dad and even though his child made a mistake, he still received his child and was like, bro, it's okay. I still love you. I'm just glad that you're alive and that the family didn't take you out. You know what I'm saying? I'm grateful that you're still here. Thank God you're still here. That's more than enough for me. Let's celebrate. So then fast forward to the end, y'all. So they celebrate and they turn it up. They eat it good. They live it good. They, uh, 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 uh. They turn it up. They eat it good. They live it good. They feel it good. They, uh, 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 uh. They having all of that. I don't know what that sound is, y'all. Don't judge me. But they doing all of that, y'all. And... The, it says the older brother was working in the field. The older brother finds out about what's going on because he hears the music, sees the dancing, and he's like, yo, what's happening in this drink? Literally walks up to the property and finds out that from the servant that his brother came home, that what his dad did, so on and so forth. And the brother starts going off in the yard, going off in the yard. Nah, this some old bull How in the world are you gonna be out here? You ain't never throw me no party. How you, you know, just getting rowdy, just getting turned up, just getting really, just really getting lit out that thing. So much so that the father comes out and has to calm him down, like, bro, chill out, bro. Like, your, your brother is here, and I'm going to save you all of the details, and I'm going to come back to here. This is what the dad said in verse 31. And he said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make Mary and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Your brother came back to his senses, bro. He's right where he needs to be. You've always been here. And even before this part, you know, like, everything that I have, you had access to. Like, you can't be so mad because at the same time that the dad gave the brother his portion, the dad also gave the older brother his portion. So you can't be mad that I gave him the fatter calf. You could have been had a, a fatter calf for you and your friends. You could have been turned up and threw a party. You know what I'm saying? All that I have, you have, but he don't have. 
and he got cut off. And it was by the error of his ways, but I still love him, that's your brother. And at the end of the day, he survived. So let's celebrate this moment. Like we can have a conversation later about what it looks like with him staying and all the things. But right now, let's just let's just live. Let's celebrate. Let's rejoice. Let's be glad. And let's be grateful. So, rush your Bible stories. The prodigal bruh. I thought that was crazy. Because I always thought the older brother didn't have a right to clap back. Uh, I thought the old brother had a right to clap back at the dad. But I didn't know that the older brother had gotten uh, his portion as well. So, yeah. So, that's Ratchet Bible Stories for you, the prodigal bro. Until next time, you guys, peace. Um, if you got another Bible story that you love, like, what's another Ratchet Bible story that y'all be like, oh, this is Ratchet. This is crazy. Like, this is HBO quality worthy. Like, I'm just curious. I might, I might, I might read that and interpret it. But, all right, bye.